Hey, it's Joel the 3D Printing Nerd, and what I have here in front of me is the Mod T 3D Printer from New Matter, and this is going to be my review of this machine. The New Matter Mod T is a very interesting offering. At $299, it's an inexpensive machine for what it offers potentially. It's got a 150 by 100 by 125 millimeter build envelope. It's got a 0.4 nozzle. It takes 1.75 millimeter filament and it'll print essentially PLA. It's got fans that blow on the filament. It's got filament out detection and it's easy to load and unload the filament which is interesting because everything is controlled via the cloud software. The machine itself has a button on the front and that's all you get as far as a hardware control. Everything else is controlled via the website. Let's drill down on the price just a little bit. The new Matter Mod T is $299. It's 150 on the X, 100 on the Y, and 125 on the Z. That gives you 1,875 cubic centimeters of build area and at 299, that is 16 cents per cubic centimeter. Its neighbors in that category are the Zix printer at 19 cents per cubic centimeter, the Kodama Trinus at 20 cents per cubic centimeter, the Obsidian at 14 cents per cubic centimeter, and the Lulzbot Taz 6 at 13 cents per cubic centimeter. At 16 cents per cubic centimeter and at $299, then what does the Mod T give you? It gives you this stylish case with this plastic top. It does say new matter right there. You can remove it and set it to the side. Up here's the nozzle, it's 0.4 millimeters. Like I said, the print head is here. Filament goes in and out right here. I did 3D print a fan shroud for it, which does help. The build plate is interesting because there's two slotted metal rods that it rides on. It's a heavy piece of metal with some plastic around it, and the plastic itself is slotted so that it can address it in the X and Y. Once you take the build plate off though, it is a piece of plastic, which means you can bend it to aid in getting a model off of the print bed. The Mod T also gives you a few tools to work with printing things. You do have a golden toothbrush if you have metal teeth. You do get some snips here to snip things and you do have a plastic razor blade which is I believe safe for kids. All right but let's say you want to actually print something with this machine. Let's put the cover on for now and let's go to the slicer. The Mod T has only one button, and everything is handled via the cloud you access via a web browser. New Matter has quite a few designs on the site with more added by users all the time. Once you pick the model you want from the design library, you add it to your library. Once the model is in your library, you pick that design, then click the print button. If your model has multiple parts, you can pick the part to print. Also, your print settings can be chosen via the pre-configured shortcut buttons or via custom settings where you can change things such as layer height, infill, temperature, and print speed. Once you're ready, click the print button. Now all that's left to do is push the button on the front. That sets everything in motion. For this print, I'm going to remove the case so we can get a good look at things. The printer moves the bed around in order to calibrate it. Once the bed is calibrated, the head lowers until it is at the print height. It first uses a few movements to wipe the filament on the bed to prepare the nozzle and verify the filament is ready for printing. Once the wipe is done, the print starts. Perimeters are first as usual, then the infill starts. is done and with this sort of build plate you can take it out it's really easy there's a little bit of stringing left in the extruder and we can just take that off the build plate then slides off and because it's plastic you can flex it a little bit and then get your part right off so here's the part this is the toothpick holder 
and the holes do look big enough for toothpicks. But there's a problem with this model, and there's a problem with all of the models that come off this machine. There's this texture on it. This model actually shows a little bit of layer inconsistencies, but it also shows this strange texture. There's wisps of filament that are coming off of it, and that might be able to be controlled with temperature or retraction settings or whatever, but this model, as well as everything I've printed on this thing, has this weird texture. Let me show you. Here's a Benchy. Everybody prints a Benchy. It's a great benchmark, hence the name Benchy. But you can see that the filament left a bunch of wisps, and there's this strange texture to the model. What I did was print this. It's on Thingiverse, and I can put the link down in the description. It's a fan shroud, so it takes all of the air coming from the fan in the head and directs it towards the end of the nozzle. That produced this Benchy. You can see there are far less filament wisps on the Benchy, but it did not eliminate the texture. If you take the texture out of consideration and you just look at the Benchy as a Benchy, it did a decent job printing it, but the texture just ruins it. This was one of the first models that I printed on the machine. It's got a place in the back where you can hang it on a wall or something. It's a glorious print. The machine did a fantastic job printing this. It stuck to the build plate and everything turned out fine. Again, there is a texture. It's not as apparent on this model, and I don't think it's as detracting from this model as the Benchies, but it's still there. One of the things that I thought showed off the texture the most was my Maker Coin, and I, I printed this on the printer, and like other models, it did a fine job technically with it, but there's still this strange texture. There's some filament wisps, and I know that those can be fixed in one way or the other, and I could actually take a heat gun to this and get the, the wisps to melt away. But still, it did not print this as good as I think it should have. One of the things I thought was interesting in printing the faceless model is I put this in, and you can tell it's missing the top of its head. The slicing engine didn't stop me from printing something that was out of bounds of the slicer. I did slice it again, I reduced the scale and I was able to print it, and again these show off the filament wisps and the texture. But I thought it was interesting that the slicer didn't stop me from making a mistake, and I, I think it should have. Finally, I, I wanted to try something. This is the Polymaker PolySmooth filament. Uh, it does ha have some wisps. The texture is apparent, but I wanted to put it through the polisher and see what would happen. This is what happened. You can see that the texture is still there and it's slightly smoother. So even a polisher is not going to be able to remove this texture from your model. As you can see, I printed a fair number of things with this machine. I even printed the holder for the toothbrush, the snippy snips, and the plastic blade that it comes with to remove prints and clean up the printer. The problem is, again, just like with everything, this is showing off the wisping and it's showing off this strange texture that's apparent on all prints. And that kind of leads me to my final thoughts on this machine. At $299, you're getting an experience because you have the printer and you have the cloud-based slicing engine. You're getting a model library. If that was everything you were considering, then this at $299 is quite a deal. This is a good family machine if that's all you're considering. This is a machine that kids could learn from. There is a removable build surface, which makes it easy to get things off the build plate. There's a head that makes it easy to load filament and it's an aesthetically pleasing machine. But if you want more from your printer, this is not the printer for you. This texture, an example for cosplay situations, would be atrocious to have to sand down or fill in. At this point, knowing this is how it produces the models, unless you don't care about the texture, of your model and you just want to practice printing things and you have $299 to spend and an internet connection, then I wouldn't recommend this machine. I think that at $299, you're not getting your money's worth and I think that at $299, I expect much better quality from a machine that produces prints. It's interesting to note at $299, you are paying 16 cents per cubic centimeter for the build volume, but the Obsidian from Kodama is 14 cents per cubic centimeter. And even the Taz 6 itself 
is 13 cents per cubic centimeter. Going by the price of the machine alone isn't the full story. You want to find out how much you're paying for the build volume that it can produce along with the feature set that go along with that build volume. And right now of its neighbors in the price per cubic centimeter category, I would put this near the bottom. Those are my final thoughts on the New Matter Mod T. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informative. If you have questions about anything I've said or if you don't agree with me, please leave your thoughts, your questions, your comments down below. Otherwise, let's call it good. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Don't forget to ring that bell. A big thanks to everybody that watches me via YouTube Red, supports me via Patreon, or if you let the ads play. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.